Hi everybody, here we are in the next to last week of class and I wanted to give you some instruction on rhetorical analysis. I hope that you have noticed that um, next week will not be an entirely full week like we normally have, so I have condensed some things to try to uh, make it a little bit easier to follow along. This Friday, uh, day after tomorrow, I will open the next a week or half a week's content in order for you to be prepared to take that final essay, which will be a timed writing and you will have to do that in a proctored setting. So um, if you go into institutional resources, you can scroll down and find information about Honor Lock. I want you to watch that video and figure out what's going on there. Also, if you go into course tools, uh, there is a using honor lock video that you will watch in order to be prepared for that. So more information to come on that. Um, if you go into our current uh, unit folder, it gives you the lineup for the week. There's lots of reading in order to get a grasp of the rhetorical analysis essay. Um, Really, I, I leave this one as the last one for the semester because it's kind of like a culmination of all of the different types of writing that we have been doing. It, rhetoric or rhetorical analysis is kind of like analysis and uh, evaluation and using support and evidence kind of all wrapped up into one. All right, so it's definitely a, a different elevation from what we have been doing so far. Um, rhetoric is just a fancy way of saying communication, really. A lot of people use rhetoric as persuasive communication, but that isn't necessarily the case. Um, if you are, um, you know, talking to your uh, parent as a 16 year old and you say man I really need the car Friday night I want to do this this and this and that's rhetoric you know you're communicating with that person and then let's say for example that person is in a really bad mood and so you change your tactics a little bit uh, in order to be a little more convincing about the car something like that right then Again, all of those aspects of what you are doing, all of the different types of appeals that you might use or how you change it depending upon the situation, all of that is a part of rhetoric. And so when we write rhetorical analysis, we are um, looking at another uh, piece of literature, and uh, in this case nonfiction or essays, and we are looking at those different aspects of the situation. All right, so in my example, I tell you this is a 16 year old wanting the car for Friday night, right? So in our rhetorical triangle, the context of the situation is, is what is surrounding this event. Let's say uh, mom is in a really bad mood. You had come home late the previous Friday night. You know, all that context or background information, where this is happening, all that is a part of the way that you build your argument. So you have, as part of the rhetorical triangle, the writer or speaker, uh, persona sometimes is what we call that, um, and the audience, you know, who is this for? right and then the subjects kind of behind my video here but um the subject itself so wanting the car audience mom you are the, the speaker the context is she's in a bad mood and we're in the kitchen at you know 10 o'clock in the morning the intention is like the aim what you want to get out of it and so when we analyze rhetorically we break down all of those pieces and we look at those things and we ask ourselves how effective is this piece based upon the rhetorical situation what is inside of this rhetoric is how you are building your ar argument now so as you look at the different ways that you would try to um, persuade, then all of those appeals that we talked about with argument in the research unit come into play here. So you have logical appeals, emotional appeals, um, ethical appeals, and I might use different ones of these depending upon the audience. 
I might use different ones of these depending upon the subject, right? And so when we rhetorically analyze, we're looking at how all of this works together, how it comes to play, and then is that an effective argument based upon all of those things? <clears throat> you may say, for example, well, you know, um, for the intended audience, for, you know, if this, if this is an article in Woman's Day magazine, for example, um, this, this is an argument that works for that audience. The demographic is a group of middle-aged women who shop for their families and pick up those magazines at the checkout stand, right? And so that argument, be, it's very largely emotional, but it may have worked for that audience. However, today's college reader would want more logical appeals, more evidence from valid sources, that kind of thing. So that's what we are doing when we analyze rhetorically, is we look at all of those key elements and then we make a judgment of that work and discuss that in our papers. <clears throat> so as far as some key things that you want to be looking for as you read these articles for rhetorical analysis, uh, these the list of questions in the PowerPoint at the end and of course you have your critical questions that's an assignment as well so um, again you know rhetoric is is we've already been doing analysis but this is kind of like another animal on top of that okay so we're gonna experiment by looking at a couple of different pieces Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from Birmingham jail um, and then shooting an elephant by Orwell you're going to look at some of those rhetorical aspects and, and question that so that you kinda get some good practice and then um, stuff is not salvation is another award-winning author that I want you to look at the strategies and devices that she uses in order to make her point and ask yourself you know how effective is this piece okay now there's also an example of a student rhetorical analysis in your little Norton reader so again in looking at the clan of one-breasted women you're going to look at aspects of that argument. How is Williams pulling that whole thing together and making her point and how effective do you think that is? And then I want you to see how would a student respond to that by reading A Passion for Justice because that one is looking specifically at the use of persuasion in that essay. Now keep in mind that um, rhetorical analysis the way that you do it is going to depend on what essay you are looking at. So for example, some essays you may find, oh yeah, there's emotional appeals and logical appeals, and I see this ethical appeal right here at the end. Yeah, that's a, a very classically structured argument and it works for this audience, etc. Right? However, you might read an essay that it's very light on those other appeals. So you have to ask yourself, what then do I focus on in order to analyze this piece? Is it the way that it's written? Um, are there literary elements like I would see in a short story in fiction embedded in this essay? And that's what is bringing out this emotional response in me. Or are you saying, well, you know, the voice of this piece overall is really what I'm reacting to um, because this person is writing to me like he or she is just talking to me and I find it very conversational and it pulled me into the article because it was like a conversation that I was having, you know. And so what you're going to be looking for as you annotate these pieces is what is it about these essays that are driving them? that is that is making them successful okay and that's what you're going to structure your own rhetorical analysis off of okay now before we get into that final I want you guys to really consciously be thinking about grammar and mechanics I want you to know what you're doing as far as citing those sources correctly we still have lots of problems with the research paper um, I'm going to be grading the evaluation essays now last couple of days have been nuts so um, I'm getting to those in the next few days you should get feedback on those um, so look back at the feedback you've gotten on essays use the grammar link 
that is supplied for you in the task list at the top of your unit folder um, to uh, remind yourself of some rules. Uh, use that error directory that I provided to you so that you can see, okay, what was it that I kept getting points off on and what are the rules and how can I apply them to writing now because you're going to be responsible for that in that grammar and mechanics test at the end of the week. And this is a global learning outcomes assessment. So in other words, this is something that we use to record data for ourselves um, in our department. Um, Again, as a reminder, um, you know, this is a one shot kind of thing. So make sure that you're using a secure internet connection when you uh, follow that link. I suggest you do not take that on a cell phone. Um, there's no backtrack. So you got to feel secure in your answer as you go. Um, it's only time to 25 minutes though so you are not going to have enough time to look everything up I want you to to um, do some review and, and feel good about what you're doing if you have questions for example if you have noticed that you keep missing points on pronoun antecedent agreement on your essays and you've gone to that grammar book link and you're still a little bit confused please contact me I have a variety of different ways that I can um, explain things if you need that um, I don't build in a whole bunch of these grammar mechanics uh, kinds of uh, instruction along the way through the course because I'm giving you that individually on your papers along the way. I don't do that also for everybody uh, in the course throughout the course like here's a lesson on commas and here's a lesson on this and here's a lesson on that because not everybody needs the same instruction. Right? Some of you never have a problem with pronoun antecedent agreement. Some of you never have a problem with subject verb agreement. Some of you never have a problem with commas. So I don't want to bog everyone down with those lessons if you don't need them. Um, however, we all have to be responsible for that information moving forward. Um, I'll give you an example um, of you know things that you see on Facebook sometimes and there's a grammar or mechanics problem and you laugh and you think oh you're so silly or whatever I know so many people and sometimes myself included that if I see that kind of mistake on Facebook then I just go well, I'm not buying that right so I don't trust the content if the person isn't professional enough to make it grammatically and mechanically correct and so I want everyone to understand that we are often judged by that written word that we put out and so I want you guys to be conscious of that as you move forward in your educational or business careers that grammar and mechanics are important they matter and so I want you to strive to um, improve that and uh, review for that before you take that test all right so if you have any questions give me a shout I can call you I can zoom meet with you whatever I need to do in order to make you feel secure going into this final best of luck this week and talk to you again soon